Cela fait suite à la dégradation continue de la situation sécuritaire. In the event the authorities' demands are not met within one week, such measures may include the use of force. Let me be very, very clear about our economic and security partnership with Niger, which is significant, depends on the continuation of the democratic governance and constitutional order. The coup by officers from Niger's presidential guard disrupted the country's democracy. It came just two years after the country's first successful democratic transition from one elected president to another. It's not a surprise because in Niger we have many coup d'etat since uh, three decades, since uh, uh, 30 years. The soldiers behind the coup deposed and detained President Bazoum. The man who was supposed to lead in protecting the president then declared himself the new leader of the country. Protests in the capital near May greeted General Abdurrahman Chiani's declaration. The military junta imposed a nationwide curfew, closed all air and land borders, and suspended all democratic institutions. The coup sparked international condemnation, and regional bloc echoers gave the military a one-week ultimatum to give up power. But for the coup to happen at this point in time, um, I think it doesn't come as a surprise, owing also to the fact that um, Niger public is strategically placed, you know, in the region known as the Liptako Goma, which, you know, is the triangle between Burkina Faso and Mali. Niger's neighbors, Mali and Burkina Faso, where military juntas are also in charge, warned that any foreign military intervention against Niger's junta would be considered a declaration of war against them as well. Amid the tension, Western countries, including France, immediately began to evacuate their citizens. What is the role of external forces in the current coup crisis? France has always been a, a kind of a, a backbone in any uh, um, I mean democratic or undemocratic change in, in its former colonies. Can international pressure, including sanctions and threats of military intervention by regional bloc ECOWAS, reverse the coup? I believe that um, ECOWAS has failed to prevent uh, further coups from happening. Like in the case of uh, uh, Niger Republic now, they haven't learned lessons from um, Mali and Burkina Faso. What is next for Niger? Niger is a landlocked country sharing borders with Mali, Libya, Algeria, Benin, Burkina Faso, Chad, and Nigeria. It is rich in minerals including uranium, coal, gold, and petroleum among others. The coup in Niger has raised serious concerns about the fate of counter-terrorism efforts in the Sahel region where armed groups linked to Daesh and Al-Qaeda continue to unleash violence. It is just the latest military takeover in West Africa. What, in effect, uh, we have seen in terms of Niger's um, you know, strategic location um, is the fact that they've simply copied and pasted uh, the, the, the situations that occurred in Mali and Burkina Faso. And, you know, um, they're succeeding so far uh, with that template. Niger becomes the fourth country in the region to have a military coup since 2020. Guinea Conakry, Mali, and Burkina Faso are being governed by a military regime, while Chad is currently under a transitional government. I think that the leaders in the Sahel are focused on uh, the fight against uh, violent extremist group, and they forget uh, to focus on the real need of the population. Those behind all the coups in the region cited rising insecurity and a lack of economic growth for their actions. Why now do we see, uh, you know, these coups happening? Uh, it, it could be as a result of the fact that, um, you know, democracy has been installed or, or you know, um, hijacked by many of these governments. But the systems in place uh, themselves, you know, are not things to go by in, you know, from a democratic perspective. You know, if you have um, governments, especially that we've seen being overthrown, 
a lot of them rely on the actors, you know, who are the military uh, to protect them. There is also the question of foreign influence. Before the coup, Niger was the remaining country in the Sahel that has good ties with former colonial ruler France. France, unlike uh, Great Britain, uh, I mean, uh, offered independence, uh, left, uh, but never, I mean, went anywhere. France's uh, impact is uh, everywhere in terms of uh, uh, the uh, formation of uh, GDP of these countries. France um, insisted to, to maintain uh, its uh, grip uh, over the uh, the, uh, uh, the natural resources. Uh, first of all, we talked about uh, uh, uranium, uh, and, and uh, this is uh, true also of, of other energetic resources. Perhaps this years of political and economic interest of France fueled the anti-French sentiments. The French embassy in EMA was targeted by pro-coup protesters. We have now a young population that need respect, that need more economic male situation and that need to be uh, more considered by the French leader. And they understand that the French continue to work with the elite. Geopolitics plays a very strong role, um, especially when it comes to uh, these countries that have experienced coup d'etat, Guinea, Guinea, Guinea uh, one, Mali, Burkina Faso, and then Niger. They all have uh, French as their former colonial masters, as I call them. Um, and one thing that has been very clear is that um, a lot of the time when these coups happen, uh, you know, there is evidence of the population rising up and saying, as we've seen in the case of Niger, um, what they're saying is that they want France to leave. The West interests in Niger go beyond France. There is real uncertainty about the implication of the coup. The last thing you ever want when you have a security vacuum and a governance vacuum is for non-state actors to be able to have a safe space to hide, recoup, and um, figure out a way to expand from there. The last thing that ECOWAS wants um, is to plunge uh, uh, this region into a geopolitical um, rivalry, um, whereby perhaps you could have situations where, um, you know, Mali and Burkina Faso, those who support them, uh, perhaps Russia could come to the aid of um, uh, Mali, Burkina Faso, and then of course indirectly th that they could also support the junta in in Niger. So we don't we don't want a proxy war in the in the region. Um, we have seen the impact of war in Ukraine. Um, so any kind of war um, should not be an option. Military regimes in Mali and Burkina Faso have been under sanctions, which were recently lifted. For many, the sanctions appear not to have borne fruit. Sanctions don't work because. Uh, the borders that Niger share with seven countries. I think they forgot that the population that live between the border of these seven countries, they don't care about this sanction. And we forgot that Niger is a country that have the uranium, that have many, many materials that they need for the economic movement of the other country and at the ECOWAS. So, what will it take to end the current wave of military coups in West Africa? The African Union has to make it very clear that in a democratic process, you don't change the game halfway, you don't change uh, the rules, you know, halfway in the game. Um, that itself would remove um, some of the excuses or the justification, you know, of military coups. We have to question the role of the civil society organization because they have to pay, play an action in the governance of the Sahel and in the other country in the West Africa. As long as the situation uh, is uh, what we, we've known of it, uh, it does not change. If As long as the situation does not change, uh, the scramble will still continue.